Welcome. I am here to talk a little bit about AI and how we can use AI tools um, in our everyday lives, in our professional lives, with our students and so forth. My name is Erica Martinez and I'm <laughs> with the University of South Florida in the Tampa campus. And I teach in the economics department. And I've been using AI actively for about a year now, um, slowly last spring and then pretty much very often since summer. So generative AI in particular, we have these large learning models. They take copious amounts of data and they're trained, pre-trained in a non-specific way. And then they can be trained on sub specific tasks. Uh, like we see the AI tutor with Macmillan trained on our textbooks. We can then input data, input text, and the engine is pretty much analyzing and connecting patterns and then predicting the next sequence in that pattern and generating that output. So we've seen AI uh, used to generate music, generate text and writing, generate art. Now they're also working on AI's ability to generate video, um, which is very early on, but we can use it a lot of different ways. And here today I'm going to talk about how we can use it in our instruction. The main thing is the cat's out the bag. At this point, it is in use by many or most of our students. And regardless of whether or not we want to accept it and adopt it, it's going to be present in our classrooms if we allow it or not. And it's a new technology that we can incorporate to help increase engagement and learning. So there's a few ways that I use it to make my life easier. I use it in the classroom, allow students to use it out of the classroom and assessments, and also um, want to talk about how um, we can discuss ethical use of AI with our students as well. So in terms of what the data says, this is from a study, Titan and uh, Turnitin collaborated in this study to look at whether or not faculty and students and how often they were using AI. And they found this came out in fall of 2023. And the next iteration of the study is coming out shortly. They found at this time, 49% of students were um, using it on some level versus only faculty 22% were using it. And we've seen you know, the pace at which faculty are becoming adopters um, lag considerably behind that of students. And this one is specifically looking at whether or not um, students are allowed to use it in the classroom versus whether or not they do use it. And for what types of tasks on writing assignments, the purple are faculty, whether or not themselves are users, and then the green are students. So there's a lot of overlap in brainstorming, outlining and structuring and editing that both faculty and students feel comfortable allowing students to use it and students actually using it. And then we see um, where there's a lot of classes where um, and cases where faculty are not letting students use it to write the entire assignment or large parts of the assignment, yet students are still using it. And these are faculty are not uh, letting students use it on writing assignments at all. And then the next one um, looked at whether or not faculty and students believe that generative writing tools will be needed in the workplace. And by and large, there is agreement among faculty and students that it will be needed. There was a study by Amazon that looked at over a thousand firms, this was in January, and asked, um, would you, are you looking to hire people with these skills? 73% of them said yes. 75% of them says is difficult or has been quite impossible to find people that already come with generative AI skills. They said that they were willing on average to pay 35% to 47% higher in wages for people that come with the, these skills. And so these are skills that are demanded in the workplace. These are skills that faculty by and large are saying we recognize that they will be demanded and can lead to fac uh, student success. Students can get jobs sooner more likely to get a job sooner, more likely to get paid more. Um, and the firms believe that is the expectation that, that employees will come with these skills. And faculty believe on some levels that the university should be preparing them, yet we're not preparing them. So what can we do to help get our students exposed to the generative AI skills and then also um, help them better prepared for work? So for myself, how I use AI, I use it in a variety of ways professionally, revising, drafting emails, 
summarizing meetings, course descriptions, objectives. I also use it personally. I think the very first time that I used AI was to help plan an itinerary for a vacation. Um, I also am the, it's a long story, but I'm the vice president of the PTA where my children no longer go to school. Um, <laughs> when I was chair of the nominating committee and I drafted like the, the call of nominations, I used that to draft, so I use it a lot. Um, and, it, and I find it really helpful. And I found that my use in my personal life has then helped me see how and um, what gains students can have if we use it in the classroom setting. And then in how I use it in classes, it depends on what type of classes that I'm teaching. Primarily I teach principals courses. And for myself, I feel like, well in any of the courses, I feel like it's our job to make sure that students understand what AI is, we provide them with a set of guidelines and how AI can be used in our class, because it's gonna vary. It's up to us to determine what academic integrity means in our classroom, and it's unclear. So the default, if I have an exam, I don't necessarily need to tell students, you cannot use your calculator, because the default is I wouldn't be able, or I can't use a cheat sheet. But it's unclear whether or not students can use AI or to what extent they can use AI because they've been using AI. Grammarly is an AI tool and it's understood that it is acceptable. ChatGPT is another AI tool. There's a lot of gray area about whether or not that's acceptable and then how it can be used responsibly. So at the very least, even if you don't want students to use it, we should all be letting students know we're not allowed to use it in this class or use it in our class in this particular way and, and why. And then um, I also, in my principles and introductory courses, um, have some assignments, sometimes in class, sometimes out of class, which are more introducing students to the tools and thinking um, and reflecting on that use and how it might be useful for them and as a means of engaging learning versus in the upper level electives, I teach um, uh, MBA managerial economics and I try to ex give AI examples of how they might use it in the workplace in the upper level advanced classes. So this is a, a sample of the guidelines that I provide in my classes. It starts with an introduction to AI, usage and philosophy. I tried to get a, another screen grab of um, the different types of assignments. I also list like on homework, you can use it this way. On quizzes, you can't use it. Exams, you can't use it. Discussion board, you can use, use it in this way. And then also, which is equally important, is on the writing assignments in particular, in this class, I allow them to use it, but they have to cite properly and attribute it. And I give them a, a table of different ways that they can use it and that they need to be specific in how they're using it if they're going to use it. So I, I let them decide whether or not they choose to use it on this particular assignment. And then also um, lean on the APA recommendations or MLA recommendations for how students need to cite those um, use of generative AI in the paper. So the students have to submit this or, or submit a statement that says that they're choosing not to use it. So I wanna make sure that they've at least read the guidelines. In my upper level classes, I don't make them submit the whole table because hopefully they would have thought about that more carefully, but they do need to cite properly when they're using it. So in terms of where you all and we all can begin to integrate AI into our assignments, I think we need to begin with a metacognition exercise for ourselves. Think about um, your feelings surrounding AI. It can be quite polarizing and think about what, what opinions you have and why you have them. Um, and with other technologies, how quickly you were or were not to adapt, adopt them in your classroom. And if there's a difference now, why? Um, there, I think we're hyper-focused on, um, in, in academia, using it to cheat. But we define what cheating is or isn't in our classrooms, number one. And number two, which I have at this bullet point, we have formative versus summative assessments. Nobody's saying, I think the focus is, well, they're cheating and I can't evaluate the proficiency, but don't use it as a summative assessment. We can use them as formative assessments instead, or we're not trying to evaluate their proficiency or mastery of a subject. Um, use AI yourself, professionally, personally, so that you can familiarize yourself with its use and see how it works, how it doesn't work, what, what's good about it, what's not. Uh, don't become overwhelmed. You can start with an existing assignment and then just make small changes. Add an extra question that asks students 
to incorporate AI. And you don't need to start from ground zero. How do I build an entire AI assignment? We can make an extension of assignments that we already have and then expand later as you become more and more comfortable. Uh, as I said, consider using AI for formative versus summative assessments. So instead of trying to evaluate a student's learning in the course based on an assignment that integrates and uses AI, we can use it as a tool of engagement, right? So for me, I don't use iClicker as a summative assessment, but it's still really useful in my classroom. Um, explore different uses of AI to support different learning styles. So we think about generative AI in terms of text, but maybe students can use AI to create a visual to supplement the whatever your concept you're having them represent in your assignments. And then emphasize um, reflection and critical higher order thinking. So at the end, I always like to ask students, you know, how did AI help you, particularly in the introductory courses? How can you see this being useful in other applications and so forth? And then lastly, make the grading policies clear require proper citation, communicate clear assessment criteria with the use of AI for your students. So as a sample, um, this is one assignment that I use, again, extending um, something that I would have done anyways, taking a clip from, it's a clip from Friends which basically highlights Monica's like making candy for her neighbors and then the candy is just left out and then all the neighbors take the candy freely and then it causes like a mob reaction. She has to deal with that. So that um, in econ leans on rival goods, non-excludable goods and tragedy of the commons. So students can watch that. And then in this case, I have them work with AI to also um, explore what's going on in the video. So the students would themselves first watch the video, describe what's going on, think about the what's happening in economics terms, and then turn to ChatGPT, explain what's going on in the video, and then ask ChatGPT to basically go back and explain the economic concepts. And then they evaluate whether or not the answer that was provided by the generative AI is correct or incorrect. And then they can go back and readjust the prompt to give better descriptors and arrive about at the correct answer. Because it's also a combination of a reflective exercise. So we're doing retrieval practice. We're doing interleaving. But also, I want them to explore the limitations of ChatGPT, how we can iterate across the prompts and improve the output and so forth. And then, um, so we lead to, we, we end up with this problem of tragedy of the commons, and then I ask students to come up with a creative solution to that problem, and then they would then ask ChatGPT, once it's identified the correct problem, to come up with a solution, and then compare um, their answers to that of ChatGPT, and then reflect on whether or not it's beneficial, um, was the answer helpful, and how, and then you know how they could plan on using the generative AI or um, how they would validate and ensure accuracy and so forth. So that's more of an introductory assignment. And then here at Concluding, I just have resources that might be helpful if you're considering exploring AI. So ChatGPT I use most often. Um, there's uh, Scribe. I also use Microsoft Copilot, particularly I like it um, best for images. I like you developing images in there, Gemini. Then you also have prompt generators. So you have uh, generative AI, which you input the prompts and it outputs, but then you also have websites will help you refine and generate prompts that you can put into the open AI. So. Mm -hmm.